Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and I just have one quick question for you. Why is 3D printing so cool? So recently, I've had the opportunity to attend a number of local fairs. I went to the St. George Board Game Convention where I 3D printed medals for them and in exchange I got to have a booth. That was the first time I ever ran a booth as a vendor and it was an educational experience but also a great time. I had a lot of fun scanning people and making them into little miniatures that they can use for their own board games as well as doing lithophanes and selling TARDIS rings and all of those things that I normally have in my Etsy shop. In fact, you can see, whoops, over here are some of the prints uh, that have now entered into my, my show-off shelf because they're just really cool and it was fun to have my Kinect scanner there and be doing really neat things with them. And then I went to the Washington County uh, Fair where I've been working with the 4-H to teach 3D printing to kids and as a result I've had the opportunity to to make some good connections and those people said hey we'll get you a booth at the Washington County Fair so I set up there and did the same thing and again very educational and it was it was a lot of fun you know my my booth at that fair was a lot different than other people people would come up to my booth and look at the prints like this and I was like no 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 in this booth you can touch everything every other booth people are like no look but no touch and at my booth I was like touch touch go crazy guys and that really gave me pause to think, first of all, did I have any right to be there? Was it, was it okay for me to be going to board game conventions and state fairs and showing off 3D printing? That, that's not the normal place for 3D printing. 3D printing is normally at, uh, at maker fairs and things like that. We think of it as a making tool, as a part of the making movement. In fact, for a lot of people, 3D printing is the maker movement, but really the maker movement is a lot more than that. But still, was it right that I go to the fair with these things? Now, the more I thought about it, the more I thought that really, these, these maker fairs, these are weird things. In fact, 3D printing get-togethers, that's just a strange idea. Why, why would we get together to talk about the use of a tool? We don't get together to talk about the use of, of uh, a drill press or a handsaw, but we'll get together and talk about 3D printers like there's something unique about the fact that they're a 3D printer and not otherwise just a tool for making things. So what is it about 3D printing that makes them stand up, that makes us get together and want to talk about 3D printing specifically? Even what I would consider adjacent technologies like laser cutting or other CNC uh, tools, people don't get together to talk about this. Heck, there are automated embroidery machines where people are making their, their designs on the computer and sending it and it would sew for them. There are uh, vinyl cutters that do the same thing, but 3D printers? We'll get together and talk about those and not even blink an eye. Why? Well, I've come up with a couple of reasons and, and here's what I think justifies getting together to talk about 3D printing more than just about a lot of other things. Number one, 3D printing is a little bit magical. Now, I don't mean that in the sense of that it's that it is the technology that is so sufficiently advanced that it's indistinguishable from magic but it does have some magical qualities to it for instance you go to you go to watch a magician they put a table up there the table is empty they cover it with a cloth and when they remove the cloth there's something on the table we call that magic now does that magic does that performance become any less magical once we understand how it's done yes and no when 3D printers were first coming into the home, they were, there was a lot of time-lapse videos on YouTube of people watching the 3D prints. And in fact, I love to watch those. They, there was a whole bit on Tested where every Friday they would film a time-lapse print and those videos got tons of views. But nowadays you do a time-lapse video and people are like, eh, whatever, we've seen it. We've seemed to have hit the hedonistic treadmill as far as the magic of 3D printing goes, but that doesn't mean 
that it's not still magical. Penn and Teller does the old ball and cups trick with transparent cups so that you can see what's happening and you're still impressed by the performance. And in a lot of ways, 3D printing has matured like that. It's still magical. Even though you know how it's done, you're still starting with an empty plate and building it up to something. And that's pretty neat. The second thing is that, as far as I'm concerned, 3D printing has broad appeal. First of all, it can do things that other technologies can do. I talked about laser cutting earlier. Well, if you want to take those laser cut designs, extrude them out, you could 3D print them. It takes a lot longer than a similarly laser cut piece, but it can be done with similar results. But it's more than that. If you are an artist and you want to do sculptural pieces, 3D printing can do that. If you are doing electronics and you want to make custom enclosures for your electronics and you don't want to have to you know, buy enclosures or modify them to fit, you want to make them custom to fit, well, you can do that. You like to do RC airplanes and drones, 3D printing can help you with that. Do you like to just fix things around the house? 3D printing can do that. 3D printing can do a lot of things. It has a very broad appeal. In fact, I'm always impressed whenever I go to a maker meetup to talk to people about 3D printing that I always meet somebody who's doing something with it that one, I would have never thought of and two, I really don't care about in a lot of ways. Not to say I don't care about them. I'm very impressed with what they're doing and I'm impressed that they came up with the fact that 3D printing could do it. But my initial reaction is really, you're using 3D printing for that? All right, enjoy buddy, I guess. And then I think, wait, no, this is wonderful. This is wonderful that they're doing something that I don't care about because I would never do that. If 3D printing was limited to what I was interested in, it would not get nearly the use out of it that people are using it for. And that's wonderful. It's wonderful that people are using it for things that are so different, that are so separate from each other. You know, the biggest thing that I make on my 3D printer, the biggest thing that makes me money from my 3D printer right now consistently is soap stamps. I make little impression stamps for people to put into their soap so that they can put their name and their logo on their soap. Do I do that because I like to make soap? No, my sister did and she was into it and she said, hey, could you do this for me? And once I did it for her, she said, hey, you should try selling this. It turns out there's a lot of people making homemade soap that wants to put their logo in it and I can help them do that. It's not something I would have thought of. So if you have a 3D printer, go ask people, what do you want to do with it and, and see what they come up with it won't be anything that you thought of, but it might be something big. And that's the cool thing about 3D printing is it has that broad appeal. The next thing about 3D printing that I really love is, I wasn't sure how to word this. I'm gonna say anyone can do it, but really it's a question of a very low bar of entry. If you wanna get a 3D printer, they cost anywhere from 150, 200 to maybe $1,000. Chances are you can find one in your price range. And if you wanna have one that's super easy to use, but you don't have to put it together, there's the Monoprice Select Mini. If you want one that's bigger that you can put it together, there's the Anet A8 or you know, a number, just so many printers in so many wide ranges, that chances are you can find one that will make you happy. And if you're not a designer, there's tens of thousands of models online that you can download and start printing today without even having to worry about it. Now, chances are it won't be exactly what you want to print. And if you did want to print something that didn't exist, you'd have to become the designer and make that. But it's easier than ever to get into that. In fact, I've got a whole video where I talk about how right now is the best time to get into 3D printing, even if you're not a designer, because it's so cheap and easy and the tools are all there. And that I think is, is the point of this, is that anyone can do it. The barrier to entry has lowered so much that you don't have to be a trust child, uh, trust fund child to do this. You can get into it now, today, if you wanted to. And I think that's wonderful. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm editing the video and I realize I missed one final point about why 3D printing generates the community around it that it does. And the reason is because 3D printing is a little bit abusive to its users. Uh, now, let me explain that just a little bit. 
if you didn't pay ten thousand dollars for your 3d printer chances are at some point something is going to break and when that happens well when that happens one of two things is going to happen either you're going to give up on the dang thing and just abandon it and if you have an abandoned 3d printer or know somebody who does you know contact me but either you're going to give up or you're going to get help and in getting help you're going to find that there is a community of people who have either had a similar problem like you've had or who are willing to help you get through it and all of a sudden you find family in 3d printing and so by being kind of difficult to use 3d printing creates its own community now this is changing and 3d printers are, are getting more reliable unless you're sticking with the really cheap ones uh, and and the companies that make 3d printing are doing a better job of supporting their customers when I got started bless MakerBot for doing what they were doing but it was the community of people who surrounded MakerBot that was their customer support that was also their QA and and their research and development as well that's not happening as much anymore so more and more this point is probably going to be less important but for now especially with the cheaper printers and for definitely the past the the fact that 3d printing has been difficult to use has actually been a strength to the community but yeah that's that's the last one it's not a great one to go off on it's not a super happy one but it's the truth all right, let's go back to the pre-recorded video. So 3D printing, you know, maybe it kind of is, is justified because it appeals to a lot of people. A lot of people can get into it really interesting and really, it's kind of magical. It's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. So yeah, 3D printing is really that cool. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I want to remind you guys that, hey, we've got the uh, Patreon backer tiles up here and there's always room for more. So if you can, please support me on Patreon. But I am just appreciative of your views either way and I love having you guys as part of the community. If you have a question about 3D printing, go ahead and shoot it at me and I'd, I'd love to answer those in the video for you. But until next time, remember, safety first. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.